To start the limiting reactant problem, the first thing I have to do is read through the problem and determine which substances are going to be my reactants and which substances are going to be my products. In this problem, it says a 474 gram sample of nickel 3 sulfate reacts with a solution containing 513 grams of calcium bromide. I'm going to stop reading right there because where the problem states that a substance reacts with another substance, the problem is talking about my reactants. So in this problem, my reactants are going to be my nickel 3 sulfate and my calcium bromide. Okay, then the problem goes on to say to produce, which tells me that they're about to start talking about the products, to produce nickel 3 bromide and 257 grams of calcium sulfate. So my products for this problem are going to be the nickel 3 bromide and the calcium sulfate. Okay, so now I have to take those substances and write a reaction equation and then I have to balance that reaction equation. So, if I come up with the correct reaction equation, it should look like this. This is going to be my nickel 3 sulfate. plus my calcium bromide producing my nickel 3 bromide and my calcium sulfate and that's an A right there okay so once the equation is written correctly then I have to go back and balance it if I correctly balance it, I should end up with these coefficients. And this right here will be my complete, correct reaction equation. Once I have my equation written, I'm going to go back through the problem and pull out the important numbers that it gave me. These numbers are the masses of the substances that I use to react, and also the mass of the product that I'm concerned about. So I'm going to read back through the problem, and it tells me that a 474 gram sample of nickel 3 sulfate, so that tells me I had 474 grams of this reactant, reacts with a solution containing 513 grams of calcium bromide. Okay, there's the mass of my calcium bromide and it produced nickel 3 bromide and 257 grams of calcium sulfate. So the problem didn't tell me how many grams of the nickel 3 bromide I produced, so that tells me that I'm not really concerned about that product for this problem. I'm going to go ahead and cross it out just to keep myself straight. Um, I need that substance there to help myself get the correct reaction equation, but once that's done and I've read through and realized I don't have a mass on this, my product of focus is going to be the thing that I have the mass for. Just to explain what's going on in the limiting reactant problem, basically what you're doing is you are going to your cabinet or your shelf inside of your lab and you're pulling off the nickel 3 sulfate, you're weighing out 474 grams of it, and you're tossing it into a beaker. And then you're going back to your cabinet and you're pulling out your, five, your calcium bromide, you're weighing out 513 grams of that, and you're tossing it into the same beaker. You're allowing these two things to react together and then give you your products, which are the nickel 3 bromide and the calcium sulfate. And since the problem that you, or the product that you're really trying to get is the calcium sulfate, once you get your product, you're going to separate it out, and then you're going to weigh out the calcium sulfate, which is your 257 grams. What we're trying to figure out here is which one of those two reactants, this one or this one, is limiting your mass of that calcium sulfate. I'm going to walk through the calculation that would allow you to determine that, um, but first we need to gather our molar masses of the three things that we have actual masses for. So I actually already pre-calculated those for you, um, and those are going to be found 
right here. To start my calculation, I'm going to go through a series of steps with the first reactant. So I'm going to focus on this one first, and then I'm going to do the same steps for the second reactant in a minute. So the first thing I have to do is to convert my reactant, my grams of my reactant, into moles of reactant. So I'm going to take my 474 grams of my nickel 3 sulfate and I'm going to convert it to moles using its molar mass from the table above which is 405.57 grams per mole. My second step is going to be to convert moles of reactant to moles of product. And I'm going to do that part using these numbers in the front of my substances, which are called coefficients or mole ratios. So if there's not a number in front of the substance, we're going to assume there's a one. So for this step in this problem, I've got one mole of nickel three sulfate for every three moles of calcium sulfate. For my last step, I'm going to convert moles of product to grams of product. And remember that anytime we're going moles to grams or grams to moles, we're always going to use molar mass for that step. So I'm going to go back to my table and get the molar mass this time for the calcium sulfate. which is going to be 136.14 grams per mole. And this time the mole part will go on the bottom because remember that I want my units and my substances from this part to move to the bottom of the next step. Now that I have my conversion set up, I'm going to go ahead and make the calculation which remember that when we're converting and we set up a table like this, we're going to multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and then divide the top answer by the bottom answer to get a final answer. So for this calculation, I should end up with this number divided by this number, giving me a final answer of 477.33 grams of calcium sulfate. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the same process for my second reactant. So I'm going to start with the mass of that reactant which is 513 grams of the calcium bromide. And remember that my first step is to convert grams of my reactant to moles of my reactant. So this time I'm going to need the molar mass of calcium bromide, which is 199.89 grams per mole. Okay, second step, convert moles of reactant 
to moles of product. So I'm going to use these numbers in the front of the reactant I'm working with and the product that I'm concerned with. So 3 moles of calcium bromide for every 3 moles of calcium sulfate. Okay, and it is important that the calcium bromide goes on the bottom. The reactant should go on the bottom in this part because remember that we want our substance and our units to move to the bottom from the previous step. Okay, last, I need to convert moles of product to grams of product. So I'm going to use the molar mass of calcium sulfate again. So that tells me that my last step is going to look like it did in the first calculation because I'm working with the same substance. Okay, and once I have that set up, I'm going to make the calculation, which should give you this number over this number, and then I'm going to divide in order to reduce, and my final answer for this calculation is 349.39 grams of calcium sulfate. Now that I have my two answers, I'm going to compare the two and decide which one is smaller. So I have 477.33 grams of calcium sulfate produced by my nickel 3 sulfate, and I have 349.39 grams of calcium sulfate produced by calcium bromide. So since the calcium bromide produced the smaller amount of the product, that reactant is going to be my limiting reactant. So the answer to the question, which reactant is limiting, is going to be the calcium bromide. Okay, the amount that is produced by your limiting reactant is your theoretical yield. So in this problem, the theoretical yield is going to be the 349.39 grams of calcium sulfate that was produced by the calcium bromide. So the theoretical yield is the maximum amount of the product that can be produced based on the limiting reactant and under perfect conditions, which is why we call it the theoretical yield.